So I'm doing the coast to coast, the Devon coast to coast. Hi folks, hope you're having a great day. So recently I completed the Devon Coast to Coast Trail, 117 miles and did it in I think about seven days, six or seven days. And it's actually made up of two trails. So there's the Erm Plain Trail, which is a short 17 miles. And then you've got the two Moors Way, which is a hundred miles. Now the two moors was always in place or has been in place since 1976 and it starts in Ivy Bridge and goes over to the north side of Devon and ends in a place called Lynmouth or Linton. And of course what happened was that someone decided they would link the north side to the south coast and so that starts in a place called Wembury. So yeah, two trails together make the Devon coast to coast. So the two moors obviously include Exmoor and Dartmoor and really what the trail does is connect um, where are we, Dartmoor to Exmoor and you go through central Devon which is really nice countryside, rolling countryside and yeah lots of kind of remote villages and even though I was there in August, I hardly met any tourists, if any. So it was all kind of local people, which was nice. So if you're going to talk about the two moors, inevitably, for this particular trail, you have to talk about the weather. Now, I live in Lancashire and actually live near the moors. And yeah, no matter what the time of the year it is, it's not unsurprising to me when I go for a walk sometimes that I have the rolling mist and the rolling rain. That kind of misty rain that gets you soaked through, even though it feels like it's not really raining. So, as I said, I went in August, but fully prepared for my time on the moors. So I had a full gear of waterproofs. That would certainly be one of my pieces of advice to make sure you're appropriately equipped with almost winter gear, as well as your summer gear. So when planning a trail, one of the first things you usually consider is the direction that you're going to be traveling in. And so here, of course, it's either north to south or south to north. And when I kind of investigated, obviously, the thing I think about is how easy are the transport links. Now, the place I chose or the way, the direction I chose was south to north. And the logic on that was really down to three points. So the first point was the fact that it's, I felt it was easier for me traveling from where I was traveling in the country to get to Plymouth. And, but then the difficulty was getting to the start at Wembury. And that's about, I think it's four miles away. It doesn't seem to be, there's certainly no rail link and the buses are not that particularly regular and it's down some small country roads. I actually got a taxi from Plymouth to Wembury. Cost me £18, but between two of us, that wasn't too bad. So when we finished at Linton, it was very easy to get the bus. I mean, it's a big town, so there's actually quite a lot of um, different bus routes. I think the nearest stations are Barnstable, and the main hub really for Devon is Exeter. And I think I've actually traveled from Exeter um, for about an hour on the bus, I think it was. So it was relatively easy. The bus stop is just kind of outside the Cliff Railway, which I'm sure you saw in my video. The other reason I chose that direction is the southwesterly winds will help to push you along and I certainly felt that. I never really felt the wind was in my face in a particularly strong way. Um, and even when we had wind and rain, 
it did feel as though it's mainly behind us. So, yeah, another consideration. Then thirdly, and for some the most important, is the Instagram moment. I don't know why more trails don't think about what it's going to be like when it finishes for the individuals that have walked. You want to have like a sense of, I've achieved something. And I want kind of confirmation of that. Um, so the great thing is in Linton, there's a wire of rambling man that you can attach yourself to for Instagram. So the four questions I often get asked about, regardless of which trail it is, is usually navigation, water, camping, and resupply. So starting with the navigation. Now, it was very contrasting, the difference between the signage that you found on the moors, which was basically kind of none, and then the signage that you got as you were traveling between the two moors, so the, the central part of Devon. On the two moors, there was just a few marker stones, and that was it, which I think was quite ironic, but where you needed it the most, there was none. It was a bit disappointing, and yeah, I hope someone can kind of put that right. I think it would encourage more people to do it. I mean, if I was going to give a marks out of 10 to contrast it, it'd be like two out of 10 on the moors and I think something like seven out of 10 in central Devon. So yeah, if you're going to do that route, you, you need to be confident about your navigation. So when it comes to water, I do actually mention in the series of videos that it can be a bit of a struggle. You have to kind of use all your powers to make sure you're sufficiently um, in supply. And I have done a video and, and in fact that video about water resupply is based quite a bit on what happened to us over the two moors. There's three places that um, probably I would mention and I think certainly two of them are covered in my videos. So one is Spiddlestone where someone has put in place a beautiful gold swan tap outside their house. It's absolutely stunning. The only thing is if you're going south to north, you haven't been walking that long when you come across it, maybe four or five miles. So the other place to mention is Changford Swimming Pool. It's an outdoor swimming pool. If you go up to the entrance where you can buy ice cream and drinks and what have you, and ask if you can fill your, your water bottle, and they'll just send you round the back and you can fill up there and they're very very nice about it so no problems at all and the third place I would mention is Nolston so if you're traveling south to north as you go down the steps into the village you've got the church on your right and there's an actual outside tap on the left hand side near the wall so that's as you're going into the village and in fact directly opposite you is the Marston's Arms and you have to be careful if you're going to the Marston's Arms about the opening times, which again, I do cover in my video. Now in terms of resupply, that is relatively easy. There are lots of towns and villages that you can rely on. I have a list here, which I will just mention a few of the places we used. So Ivy Bridge, Mortchard Bishop, Witheridge, Holm, Community Shop and Calf Alleys, and Withypool. So quite a few places and of course you can buy water from there as well. The Holm Community Cafe and um, Shop, just to be aware that the when we went there the cafe wasn't open on a Monday and Tuesday so it was a bit tough, we had to retire to the pub. So in terms of camping, we actually wild camped every night except one and I didn't really find it a struggle at all to find any places. There's lots of wooded areas around and, but of course, Dartmoor, it is legally to wild camp. And that is such a joy, not having to worry about are you going to be seen or moved on. It's something to experience, particularly if you hadn't had the opportunity to go to Scotland yet. So yeah, you can um, experience legal wild camping on Dartmoor. The other thing was that we did stop one night at a campsite in a place called Yeo Mill. And we stopped at a place called Partridge Farm Arms. Very old building. 
and it was such a joy and it was just the fact that it, it was unexpected we weren't even sure there was a campsite there you can be and be as well if you want to you want to kind of break from well camping or camping generally um, but very nice people and such a joy of a place to stay so who is this trail for then well if you like ponies horses you see your fair share of them on the moors and they're so tame as well so yeah if you love horses ponies i'm sure this trail's for you the other thing is you have to be confident around cattle there's quite a number of fields that you'll go through and yeah you're going to come up close and personal with various cows uh, as you'll see from the video i mean some of them were blocking gateways so you need to be confident around cattle and then i think the other thing is navigation those moors can be tricky and like i say i well the other thing is i'm not sure i'd want to do it other than in the summer months i'd hate to be up there in the middle of winter so yeah they're my thoughts in terms of the people so the acid test is would i do the coast to coast again and the answer is a definite yes i really enjoyed the, the kind of mix of scenery so I enjoyed moors anyway so that was totally fine for me but then contrasting that with the kind of rolling countryside Middle England is kind of what it reminds me of thatched roofs remote villages I really enjoyed that part as well and of course starting on the coast and having something like a clear objective of getting to the other coast I think really helps with motivation as well and I certainly enjoyed the ponies on the moors. I mean, obviously that's not something I get in Lancashire. So yeah, I would do it again. But it's a great trail, and I think an undervalued trail. So I'd be interested in your thoughts if you've done the trail, or now that you've watched the videos, what do you think? Is it something you might be tempted by? Drop me a note. I'll be really interested to read. So, on that note, Thanks for your time and company. I certainly appreciated it. And of course, if you can subscribe, that'd be brilliant. Share with like-minded people. And of course, don't forget, thumbs up for the dogs. See you on the trails, guys. Mm -hmm.